So it's Saturday the 4th of February and I've just got my hands on the keys, just picked them up from the agent. Let me just give you a quick tour around, tell you some of the things that I do instantly as I come into a new property and also what my plans are as well. So the first job that I'm gonna be doing is actually putting up a key safe. The reason why I put up a key safe just outside the front of the property is so my, then my tradespeople can gain access without me being here so I can actually manage the project from a distance. I've started taking off all of the curtains, curtain poles, the blinds, etc., and that's just because I want a clean and clear run at the property. It's best not to leave the loft until last. Always go up there first, drag everything down that you don't want up there because it's a messy job you'll see that I've actually taken this electric fire off the wall it was here in the lounge um, I don't want anything in this property that basically isn't just clean clear walls that are just nicely painted fresh flooring and fresh ceilings anything else at all I'm going to remove and that's simply because it, there's a potential that it could cause me a hassle in the future you'll see I've made a little bit of a mess and what I'm actually doing is just trying to thread a cable up here I'm gonna run it along the ceiling there and I'm just gonna put an extractor fan. Now the extractor fans that I install in these properties are Vector Elegance fans. These things here are absolutely fantastic. They run on a constant trickle, which basically means this fan is always going to be on while it's in this property. Now, you can't actually see them, so the tenants won't know that the fan is on and it's so quiet that they don't hear it either. Now, what I do do in both the bathroom and the kitchen is have these fans installed so they're on a constant trickle, but also so they boost on the light. That makes the tenants think that the only time that these fans are actually on is when they turn the lights on. They only cost about £1.12 per year to run for the entire time. It will always be extracting that moisture from the property, from the kitchen and from the bathroom which is going to help me manage the damp and condensation even if the tenants are drying clothes inside, not opening windows and not putting the heating on. Now you'll see I've got a boiler up here in the corner. This boiler actually when we go upstairs I'll show you it's got a water tank so I'm going to get my gas engineer just to change that system for me. This boiler actually isn't bad at all and I could absolutely leave it with a water tank. However, I know in the future I'm going to be wanting to change that system over so while I'm in the property now and renovating it I want to get everything done just so it's so robust that I actually don't have to come back and renovate this property for a fair few years to come. To bedroom number one, let's just have a quick look in here. So you can see that it's pretty standard. And then you can see all this cable in here. This is from an old alarm system. So I'm actually just gonna decommission it, um, take it out. I just don't want anything that could go wrong and call me, cause me hassle and give me maintenance problems to come back to in this property. So in this room here, I'm gonna paint the ceiling, paint the walls, gloss the skirting boards, gloss the windowsill, wipe down all of the sockets, and then this room will be good to go. I'll gloss the door as well and just make sure that it closes, which I believe it does at the moment. That then brings us into the bathroom where you can see what I've just done is removed that cabinet there. The reason for that is because it's going to—it's actually a metal cabinet. You can see it's already going rusty, and I'm just going to actually going to change that just for a flat mirror and put it on that wall. I've already taken the extractor fan out of here just so my Sparky can change it over. And then what I'll be doing in this bathroom is just putting up a curtain pole and a shower curtain. I wouldn't put a screen just because they're expensive, they get grot grotty, and they're quite easy to break by the tenants as well. So I will just be putting a pole up there. And this bathroom is really decent. It's really solid. You can see that everything is kind of very simple and easy to replace. So for example, you've just got one mixer tap here. If anything happens to that in the future, my plumber can just come in easily, quickly and just change over that tap. Same with the sink, same with the bath and same with the shower as well. That then brings us into the second bedroom and you can see that I've just actually started work on here. So what I've done, I've just taken up a square of the flooring just here so I can feed that cable all the way through into that corner. I'll then drop it down into the kitchen, chase it down and that's where I'm actually going to put the extractor fan. And then you can just see out here the backyard. So you can see the yard really nice and manageable which is fantastic. I'm actually going to use some super powered weed killer to kill off that ivy that's at the back there and I'm also going to get somebody to come and collect that shed and get rid of it just because it's going to be a hassle in the future i know don't get me wrong tenants do like a shed it gives them somewhere to put their bikes etc but if the tenants want to put a shed there they're more than welcome to because then it's their responsibility and not my responsibility i always get some comments about the sheds so yes let me know what your thoughts are on the sheds down below and if you haven't yet heard me talking about the sheds in my other videos make sure you go back and watch that because there's some fantastic comments um, and there's definitely a debate going on of whether i should keep these sheds but for me it's a simple choice and how I can simply make that choice is because 
if I don't have the shed, there is no chance that I'm actually going to have to come back here and do any maintenance work on it whatsoever. However, if I left the shed, although it might be a little bit more attractive to the tenants, it's not going to put my rent up any more at all. It's not going to add any value to the property whatsoever. And leaving it up is not going to stop or encourage somebody just to rent the property. Somebody's not going to say, yes, 100%, I want that property just because it's got a shed. So for me, there's not enough benefits actually to outweigh the fact that I'm going to have to maintain it after it. It's wooden, it's outside, and it's guaranteed that something's going to happen to it. It'll go mouldy, it'll go rotten, and it'll fall down in the future. And then it's my responsibility if I leave it there. So I'm sorry, but the shed is going. There you have it. That's where I'm at at the moment. What I have done is just sent over messages via WhatsApp to both my Sparky and to my gas engineer as well, just to show them exactly what they're going to be dealing with, to tell them exactly what is needed. I've told them that I've got the key safe up already so they can come and gain access. And then what I've actually done is been around with a pen and paper and I've written a list in every single room. Now, the reason why I do this is because it's so easy when you're renovating these properties to walk around scratching your head thinking, what shall I do next? However, if you have a list in each of the rooms, it's really easy to bounce quickly between jobs and make sure that you get ticked everything, everything ticked off. So just to give you an example, I can tell you here that I've got in the kitchen on my list, I've got a fit extractor fan, clean the sockets, clean the cupboards, paint the ceiling, clean the light, um, the actual main light service the windows, uh, clean the oven, paint the walls, remove all screws and nails, fill all holes, clean the door, uh, and clean the window. So you can see it's really simple and easy and standard stuff. And it's pretty much the same in all of the rooms as well. If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure, and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over two million pounds. Simply go to the description below, click on the link, and I'll send you out a free copy. So what I'm actually focusing on first is all the jobs that I need to do to tee up either my Sparky or my gas engineer. So what I'm gonna be doing now is actually core drilling a hole through this wall here in the kitchen to prepare, get ready for my Sparky coming in to fit the fan. Now, of course, my Sparky could actually be running these cables. He could be coring the hole, but it saves me money doing it and it keeps his time down as well, which means that I can utilize him to do other jobs. I've just made a hole down the floor, inside the concrete of the floor just here, and I've just added it onto my uh, gas engineer's list to cut that pipe and cap it below floor level. Then I'll just cement over it here. That's simply just because for me, that's just too unsightly. I don't want a tenant living in one of my properties with a round random gas pipe just sticking out of the floor in the lounge. And you can see that I've actually uh, cored the hole for the extractor fan, which is gonna go in here. I've actually fed the cable as well. It's gonna go through the isolation switch and then up in the top bedroom, I actually took the carpet and the floorboards up and actually ran the cable across this uh, kitchen ceiling and then dropped it down here. So my spark is just gonna connect all of that up for me. I've got the extractor fan ready to go. And what I'll do before he gets here, I'll actually fit that back box, get it all in place, get the fan in place. So all he has to do is just connect all the electrics for me. Just looking in the back bedroom, you can see that I've actually completely painted this room. I've done the ceiling, I've done the walls, and I've actually spent quite a bit of time as well cleaning the windows. Now, this is all windows in the top floor so far because what I found was these windows were really not opening very smoothly at all. The one, one of the ones in the front bedroom, which we'll go and have a look at in a second, didn't open at all. So I've managed to get that one open. Now, the trick that I find with these windows is if you actually undo them or manage to get them undone and then give the inner frames a really good clean and then oil the mechanisms on the inside, you'll find that they actually close really smoothly and really nicely. This window was a nightmare and I really struggled to get it open, but now I've actually done that work on it and just freed it up. It's actually a perfectly functioning window. What I am going to do though is because you can, well, where you'll see this handle's just a little bit loose, it's not gonna be the most reliable. So I am actually gonna replace all of the window handles uh, throughout the property. You might be able to just see down there that um, all of that ivy has now been taken off that back fence and also off the shed as well, just to make it easier to remove. That was a bit of a nightmare out there, but I have put some poison on it as well that'll hopefully kill the ivy in the future. Heading into the front bedroom, you can see again that I have painted the walls in here and got these ready. Now you will notice these walls, I've started to paint them white. Now the simple reason for that is because it saves me time, effort and energy in the future. 
I just pick up this Leyland stuff. I always use the same stuff. It's from B&Q. I think it's about 20 quid for two tubs, 10 litre tubs of it. Um, mass produced, it's always available. Now the beauty of it is, is that I now know throughout all of my properties, they're painted with the same paint. So anytime that I need to come and do a bit of a touch up job, I've already got the paint for it. And the beauty of doing the walls white, as well as the ceiling and the skirting boards, it's really easy just to quickly flash over with a paintbrush or a roller. You don't have to ever worry about cutting in. Just a bit of a handy hint for you. I'm just finished for the day now. I am gonna be home, but I am gonna be coming back to the property over the next couple of days or so. So what I've actually done is just cling filled up, cling filmed my roller roller tray just here and the roller's still inside it. I can also do the same with a brush. I just use normal standard cheapo cling film from the supermarket. But what it means is that actually this will stay nice and fresh for me, ready to come in and start painting again. So I don't just have to wash my equipment out, my trays, my rollers and my brushes every single night. So I'm actually just drafting up a fillet advert for this property. You tend to find that you only need one decent solid fillet advert that you can then actually use for the lifespan of the property or whilst you're letting it out. So I do prefer to do it myself. Of course, my agent could do it. I'm going to get the property fully managed, so they could and should do it. However, I do prefer to make sure I get it right in the first place, and then obviously I can just use the same advert throughout every single turnover of a tenant. I ensure that all of the information is in there for any tenant that's kind of browsing or having a bit of a look to whet their appetite and to actually get them interested and get it to the stage where they want to come and view the property. Obviously now there's so many properties out there that are for let and there's so many tenants looking as well that they pretty much just treat it like a Tinder swipe. So if you haven't got decent photos to actually reel somebody in for them to have a second look and when they go in have a look at that write-up if there's information missing and they can't see what they're actually looking for then it's easier just to swipe and move on to the next one than it is actually to phone the agent and try and get that information. I get the information from the previous sales advert so I've got most of it actually from whichever agent was selling it I just take all of their information reword it rewrite it write it reposition it and just ensure that it looks like a letting advert and I also go on to right move solve prices as well because you can often find information from previous sale sales adverts of course if there's details missing then I will get it from the property myself like the room measurements etc day my electrician's been in the property now when I say my electrician he's not actually on my team I don't pay him as part of my staff but I would class him as one of my trusted uh, power team members and what I mean by that is somebody that I can actually trust to go into the property whilst I'm away I'm, I'm at a distance I'm nowhere near the property at all I can give him the code for the key safe to go in and I completely trust him to do one a decent job but also with all of my equipment in there as well obviously it's going to be a hassle for me having to move all of my tools or hide my tools or take them out every time I need a tradesperson to go in the property or equally if I have to be there to ensure that everything's been doing done correctly so I just work up via phone and via whatsapp he's given me a shout on a couple of points asked me if i if uh, what i wanted doing with x and y etc but just having that really solid decent trusted tradesperson within your team who you can actually trust to go into your properties even though you're not there is so valuable so if you do get a member of uh, if you do get a tradesperson who is decent trustworthy who charges a good rate but does an exceptional job and you can trust them then make sure you look after them and make sure you keep them as part of your team i've asked my gas engineer to actually leave this um, and all the copper piping as well for me typically your gas engineers will take these away and the reason is because they can get good money for them if they take them to the local scrap merchants so you're better off asking them to leave this and then cashing it in yourself and then you can see now that we've just got a decent cupboard um, that I can now sort of renovate and make this cupboard nice where the tenants can put their clothes etc you can just see behind me here actually that I've got somebody now who's actually just removing this shed for me so again I just actually put the shed on Facebook marketplace now one thing that I would recommend that you always do in these buy-to-let properties when you're renovating them is give the bathroom a really good clean. And if you clean around the tiles, around the bath here, what you're likely to spot is areas just where you've got small holes and small gaps. Now water can obviously travel through here and then obviously down through the floor and into the lounge. Now that's on the opposite side to where the shower is. So there's not a great deal of um, risk there by leaving those, but you'd certainly want to be able to patch it up and just make sure it's fine before you get your tenants to move in. Otherwise you might be coming back to sort it. But certainly looking at this one over this side, so you can see here, this is on the actual shower wall and there's just a bit of a crack and a gap in the side of that sealant just there. So I actually made the decision to change the carpets in this property. There's a few areas where the carpets have been cut out and replaced. It's really dirty, tatty and old. And because I really want to command a really high rental amount on this property, I want it to be the best on the market when I do get it live. So I've had my carpet guy go in today. He's been in and measured up. He used the key safe to get in. I always use the same guy um, and trust 
trust him as well. He's been in and quoted me £630. That's for the two bedrooms, the stairs, and also the lounge as well. I already know the carpet type that I want. He's now ready on call for when I'm ready to have him come and fit it. We're on Thursday the 16th of February and the advert's just gone live on Rightmove, so hopefully now we'll get some potential tenants giving us a call wanting to view the property and I hopefully we'll get somebody secured. I've put a live date so they can move in on the 1st of March, so it just gives me that deadline to get the work done as well. So I'll just give you a quick update on where I'm at now. You can see that I've got the curtains up in this room. It's been completely painted. The skirting boards have been glossed. Radiator has been washed. Uh, windows have been serviced. So looking really nice now, fresh and airy and clean. This lampshade was actually already in the property when I purchased it, as was the curtain rail. But these curtains, they've come from the local charity shop. So what I just do is have a word with a few of the local charity shops around my area and actually ask the staff to save any curtains that they get in for me that have got the eyelets on them. So the ones with the whole in the top because they're just really nice and easy just to put onto these curtain poles. Over into the back bedroom just here you can see that I'm just painting this frame which is going to have a mirror in it to go in the bathroom there and it's going to be stuck well screwed into the wall to ensure that it doesn't fall off, fall off and it's safe for the tenants. Just glossing the hatch for the loft just here um, and then again you can see that it's nice and bright and airy. It's all been whitewashed down and then this cupboard has been serviced now as well so it's got a nice coat of gloss on in there I've just done that you can see that it's wet but that'll be a really fantastic storage cupboard for the tenants so to comply with regulations and also to keep my tenants safe while they're in my properties you can see just above my head I've actually fitted a carbon monoxide alarm that's in the kitchen which is near to the boiler now also to tick those regulation boxes and they are important ones as well you will need on each of the floors of your buy to let property a smoke alarm so you can see that I've got one just here it was actually in the property when I took on the property so I've just cleaned it up I've tested it I've checked it and I've changed the batteries as as well you will need a smoke alarm on each of the floors of your property so I've got one on the lower floor here and up on the first floor and then you need two certificates so you'll need a gas safety certificate that which is done by a gas engineer so you'll have to get somebody in to come and provide you with that before you can let the property and also an EICR which is pretty much the same but for electric so you'll need a sparky to come in check out all the electrics and just sign them off before you can actually legally let the property so I've just checked around all the radiators and I've just realized which I should have realized this earlier that they've got these old style sort of plastic TRV style um, controllers on them. So a TRV is a thermostat radiator valve. So what it basically does is turn the temperature up and down on your radiators, which I'm sure you guys have all got in your houses. Now, these things on these old style radiators, you can see here what it does, it fits over the top and then in theory, it spins this around, which either opens or closes, which turns the radiator to make it either hot or cold. The problem that I've got is these radiators are quite old. Um, these things are quite crappy and it's not actually turning uh, the valve on there to control the heat of the radiators. So I'm kind of now preempting the fact that when the tenants move in, they're going to turn the boiler on, obviously because they'll want hot water. All the radiators are going to fire up and they're not going to be able to turn them down. So then I'm going to get pulled back to the property to sort it out. So I've just messaged over to my plumber and just asked him if he can get in quick before Thursday because the carpets are going down. And what I don't want is him, one, walking on the carpets, two, changing the radiators and things getting on the carpets. So mess up on my part. So a handy, handy hint for you guys, check your TRVs, make sure that you're ready, you don't need to do anything with the water or the radiators before your carpets go down. Before I hand the property over to my letting agent, I always go and get some keys cut. I give a set over to my agent so they can obviously keep on if they never need to enter the property um, to be able to do viewings in the future, etc. And they've always got that spare set so they can actually fully manage the property. I then keep a set myself. So often when there's maintenance jobs that come up in these properties in the future, um, my agent tells the tenants um, that a, a contractor will come round and sometimes they just say let themselves in. Not often, um, but sometimes they do. And then of course, if there's any emergencies as well, then I've got a set that I can just get into the into the property if I absolutely really need to. Then of course I get two sets cut um, for the tenants as well. Now where I go to get these key cuts is I used to go over to Timpsons or somewhere like a key cutting place but I found that they're really expensive and where they actually do the key cutting now is B&Q or screw fix. Only some of the screw fixes do it, so it might not be the local one to you, but certainly at B&Q, they actually have a machine. You just pop the key in, and usually they've got a two-for-one deal as well, so it always works out cheaper, I find, than actually going um, to a, a cobbler, I believe it is, who cuts keys, isn't it? Um, unless, of course, they've got a, a unique key, and then the machines at B&Q or screw fix won't do it, so then you'll have to go to a specialist. One thing that I am going to start doing now, moving forward, from a lesson that I've actually learned this week, I went into another property of mine um, to help with a bathroom flat fan. The fan had broken 
broken and what I realised is around the mirror frame here um, the wood had started to go rotten and I suddenly realised the penny dropped. I don't know why I've not realised this before but the mirrors that I've been putting up, the ones I've been getting from the charity shops, have got wooden edges so they're not actually bathroom friendly so they're starting to go mouldy with the moisture that's in the room. So what I've done with this one is taken the frame off. I've just gone on Amazon and just got some of these clips so I've screwed the clips into the wall and just put the actual mirror itself without the frame here in the bathroom. So now there's nothing that can, can collect or absorb the moisture. It's going to stay good forever. And if I need to replace it for any reason at all, I can just order another bit of glass to fit the frame. So we're now on the 12th of March and I finished everything that I need to do in this property. And you can see behind me as well that the carpets have just gone down. The only thing left for me to do now is get my professional photographer to come into the property and take some professional snaps. The reason why I'll get him to do this, even though I've already got it live on Rightmove and I've got prospective tenants coming around the property, is simply because I want those stock photos while the property is looking the best it possibly can so I can use them long into the future. You can see here in the lounge, all the walls are white as they are throughout the property. I've got the ceiling white as well grey carpet down which is nice for tenants it looks good it's actually a gunmetal grey in colour um, but what it's also it's really durable as well it's a relatively cheap carpet I use the same guy to do them and it cost me £600 to do the entire property that's two bedrooms the stairs the hall upstairs that you'll see and obviously this lounge also I now got the TRVs here on all of the radiators throughout the property I've had a electrical so an EICR certificate done on the electrics and that has all passed I've got all the curtains up, curtain poles, all the lights have been cleaned and everything's looking really nice now, fresh and new. You'll remember there was a fireplace, an electric fireplace. That's now gone off the wall here. Um, that was just one moving part that I don't want in the property when the tenants come in. It's just one thing that can go wrong for me to keep maintenance of. Here in the kitchen, you can hear the fan actually. So every time the light's on in this kitchen, I've got this constant trickle fan on. When the light does go off, it's still running in the background anyway, just to suck all the moisture out of this room. I've got a CO alarm just up here. I've got a smoke alarm on the bottom floor just here. Kitchen's all been cleaned, looking all new. We've got that new boiler in as well. Coming to the back bedroom just here. You can again see TRVs, you can see the carpets. All their amp shades and the curtains, they were either in the property when I purchased it or they've come from a charity shop and I think you'll agree that they all match, they all look pretty good and they look nice with the carpets in here. What I've done in this cupboard, I've renovated the cupboard where the old water tank was. I just had my carpet guy put a bit of spare carpet in there. I've painted the walls so that's now now a really decent cupboard for the tenants to be able to utilise and use. Again, curtains have come from the charity shop as has the lights, shade there. We've got TRVs, got the carpet, all the walls are white. Coming into the bathroom, you'll hear the fan going in the bathroom here. So again, I've got a constant trickle fan. Comes on with the light, and also there's a constant trickle running in the background at all times. And then and my new mirror here that I've just got the clips on um, instead of the actual frame itself. And then I've also put on a curtain pole and a curtain and a shower curtain rather than putting up a screen. That's it. That's my time done in property number 20. I'm going to be handing the keys now fully over to the agent for them to take it on to get a tenant in as quick as possible so we can start getting this property to make some money. Do make sure that you head over to the next video in this three-part series, which is going to be all about the numbers. I'm going to go through detail of how much it actually cost me to purchase this property. Of course, how much it cost me to decorate and turn it around ready for tenants to move in. And then, of course, the all-important how much it's going to make me when those tenants are actually in the property and paying their rent. If you can't see the video at the end of this video, it just means that I'm still working on it, but I will get it up and live and as accurate as I possibly can to help you on your property journeys. If you've got any value from this video at all, please do give me a thumbs up. It just helps others find the video like you have done today. Make sure you go below to subscribe if you haven't done so already for videos similar and just like this one. And if you wanted to find out what products and services I have on offer to help you on your property journey, make sure you head over to my website, number 2 property.co.uk and of course if you haven't done so already make sure you go below to the description to pick up a free copy of my book how to buy to let good luck on your own property journey and i will see you next time